Yo, what's up, family, and good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for a virtual night of praise and worship with Mitchell Johnson and Rehoboth. I'm your boy, Donald Leidinger, and you are now tuned in at the Millennium House, where I have the absolute pleasure in just a few short moments to interview the man, the myth, the legend, the writer, the composer, the director, Mitchell Johnson of Mitchell Johnson and Rehoboth. So not only are you guys in for an amazing treat of praise and worship and impartation, but now you also get a front seat to an in-depth interview with the creator behind Rehoboth. But before we move forward with this tremendous night of praise and worship with Mitchell Johnson and Rehoboth, do me a quick favor. Go to all of our social media outlets. Make sure you subscribe, like, share, and follow us. Are you ready? Because I'm ready. Welcome to a virtual night of praise and worship with Mitchell Johnson and Rehoboth. Come on, let's worship the Lord right here. Come on, open your mouth. Lift your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. God, thank you for the opportunity to minister your word. God, we bless your name on this day. God, we give your name the glory. We give you the honor and all of the praise. Hallelujah. We love to call your name. Your name is Jesus. Come on, just begin to call him Jesus right where you are. Come on, just begin to call his name Jesus. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Come on, Jesus. 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 Come on, Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Who do you love? Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift your voices. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I love to call your Sing, Lord, I love. My Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, lift it up and say, Lord, I love to call your name. Hallelujah. My Jesus. Come on, let's go up, King. Say, Lord, I love to call. Yes. Come on, call him my Jesus. Hallelujah. He's my soon coming King. Lord, I love to call. Just open your mouth and worship the Lord right here. Say, Lord, I love to call your name. Oh, Jesus. Hey, he's my Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I love to call.
say, oh, Jesus. My Jesus. Hallelujah. When the enemy trying to take me out, I can call Jesus. Hey. Say, my Somebody say he's a lily in the valley. He's a bright and morning star. Oh, Hallelujah. My Jesus. My Jesus. Last time I say, oh Jesus. Come on, call him my Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a great God. And he's greatly to be praised. I said he's a great God. And he's greatly to be praised. In spite of it all, he's a great God. And he's greatly. Hey! He's a great God. Ashley, I said he's a great God. Hey! I said he's a great God. And he will get the glory out of this. I said he's gonna get the glory. I said he will get the glory. God, you take the honor. And God, we give you praise. Hey! 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 Yeah, man. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock and he's my fortress and he's my deliverer in him will I Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, there's a little song that says, God is great. Yes. Anybody know God is great? Yes. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun. Yes to the setting of the same. Come on. Come on, let's have church. Come on, all right?
What's going on, everybody? Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Rehoboth's first virtual concert. I'm joined by Mitchell Johnson of Mitchell Johnson and Rehoboth. And tonight, we are so excited for all of you to join us right here for a night of worship with the Rehoboth Fellowship Chorale. Well, formerly known as Rehoboth Fellowship Chorale, but right now we are now known as Rehoboth. That's right. So let's get into some questions that we have from the Rehoboth Fellowship Chorale. And they come, they actually come from all of the members of Rehoboth. Oh, wow. Okay. And so these are some questions that they have been wanting to know, and okay. they sent them in. So we can get started right now. Uh, Mitchell Johnson, what is the ultimate plan for Rehoboth, and where do you see Rehoboth in the next five to ten years? Well, when I established Rehoboth, it was really for the community. So I really wanted to be a blessing to the community and surrounding cities of mm -hmm. Charlotte. So, you know, we've kind of gone along that path, and of course... You know, God has kind of did his own thing, and we've turned, and we've turned, and turned, and, you know, so um, the ultimate goal is really to reach the lost, see souls saved. Um, so for the five to ten year plan, yeah. you know, I would love to see us well-traveled, mm -hmm. um, you know, visiting different states, even countries, um, you know, putting out another project. This is another project that's about to come out. You know, God's watching me. So many songs that yeah. I have not had a chance to release, and I still got a lot of stuff that I need to release that I haven't had a chance to yeah. release. So, next five or ten years, you know, release another um, two albums is the goal. Okay. Um, maybe have a bigger live recording mm -hmm. um, because of the pandemic and stuff like that. You know, we're restricting on a lot of things yeah. still here in the state of North Carolina. So, <laughs> so I definitely want to, um, you know, get some more exposure. Yeah. So, so do you see a, a, a studio recording happening? Or absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So definitely another studio record record, and then definitely another live recording. Got you. Mm -hmm. Got you. This next question is, um, is something that I've known. You and I have been friends for 10 years. Years, but mm -hmm. maybe the people don't know who are your musical influences and how do they wow. merge into your songwriting? My musical influences are Richard Smallwood, mm -hmm. Donald Lawrence, <laughs> yeah. JJ Harrison. Um, those are my gospel influences. Right. When it comes to R&B, I love Stevie Wonder. I love Al Green. Yeah. I love The Temptations. I mean, I'm an old school guy. I'm, I'm only 37, but I'm still an old school guy. So I like <laughs> old school flavor. Yeah. Hence, I like old school church. So that that all of that kind of ties in with my writing. So you know, I, this, this is a song that we're gonna sing later on in the concert, and it says "Safe." So you know, I kind of picked off a little bit from the end of Total Praise and how mm -hmm. the tennis do one part and the altos and the of that. So I kind of added my little twist and my little flavor to it as God gave it to me. So, hmm. yeah. Have you met any of them before? I have not. Well, I did. I met Donald Lawrence. I had to sing at McDonald's tour okay. when they came here to Charlotte. And I met Donald Lawrence one time. Gotcha. Uh, met JJ several times. Um, Richard Smallwood, not yet. That's on my bucket list. Yeah. Um, you got to make that happen. Well, oh, yeah. It's going to happen. It definitely mm -hmm. happened. Because we have the victory, we're going to give him praise. Did you come to give him praise? I said, did you come to give him praise? Come on, he's been right there just to save me.
if you got victory. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Drill down the what he's done for me. He gave me the victory. And I love him. I love him. I really love the Lord. Oh, you don't know what is done.
The 91st Psalm says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, Hebrew says, El Elyon, God, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What, what blessed me, Mitch, was that that word secret place that phrase that word secret has in Hebrew three letters and one stands for the shelter the covering of your heart in God's dwelling a small clay container shaped like a heart with a flat lid on it where poor folk protected things that had value the second is to, to, to dwell in the secret place, talks about the heart of God, that a person will become sheltered in the heart of God. The final one deals with the shadow of the Almighty. In the ancient days, folk believed that the shadow was part of your spirit. And so the spirit of God, comprises the secret place. What really took me in was the fact that God is a spirit that if you dwell in any place where God is then that means his presence is with you. Hallelujah somebody. The, the presence of God. I mean we get caught up in the trappings of God what it looks like, the, 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 the pews and the robes and the trappings and the program. But the fact is, it's really all about the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Because, because God being a spirit and, and your fleshly self being flesh, if you dwell where God is, it means you're in supernatural territory. That wherever you are, God is. And as y'all do know that God is everywhere at the same time. The psalmist said, if I go to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I go with wings to the uttermost parts of the earth, behold, your spirit is there. So, so when you dwell in the secret place, God, I feel a run in here. When you dwell in the secret place, it means that you're dwelling in the presence of the one who is above every God that beside him there is no God, that you dwell in the precinct of miracles, that you dwell in a place of healing, that you dwell in a place of power, that you dwell in a place of protection, that you dwell in a place where the devil can't do you no harm. I know we don't like to talk about the devil, but if I take the devil out of my Bible, then I gotta lose two thirds of the New Testament. How many know that we serve a God who doesn't just have a secret place, but our God is the secret place. When I dwell there, I will be all right. When I dwell in the secret place, I will have victory. When I dwell in the secret place, I will walk in my anointing. When I dwell in the secret place, God will lift me up above my enemies round about me. I want to be in the secret place. Hallelujah, somebody. There is no place. God is not. So when you struggle, he's there. When you're praying, he's there. When you try and fail, he's there. When you fall down, he's there. When you screw up, he's there. When you lose friends, he's there. When you're all by yourself because you choose to be in the desert for a while. That is the secret place. Covered by his protection. Dwelling in his heart. He who has no flesh, no body. Dwelling in the seat of his desires. And you dwell forever in his shadow in his spirit and so today I thank God that there is a secret place come on let's go there hallelujah
time to start Rehoboth. A lot of um, writers and singers and choir directors, they know how they want things to go. Mm -hmm. They know um, the colors right. that they want the choir to wear. They know the sound, but they don't always know the timing. Right. So when did you know it was the right time to start Rehoboth? Well, I got to go back. Okay. So I, I was at my um, the church where I used to serve, Elizabeth Michigan Baptist Church. Shout out to EMBC in Monroe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, um, when I was there, we had our church choir, we had a youth choir. With the church choir and the youth choir, we traveled all the time. If it wasn't with Bishop Gardein, it was with, uh, you know, people would just ask us to come by ourselves. Yeah. You know, um, they, released a pro they released two projects prior to me getting there, which are absolutely phenomenal. Um, and then I had the opportunity to help rearrange um, what's out now, which is called the Lord's Prayer. Okay. And so that kind of sparked the interest. And I was like, mm, I wonder if I could. So, of course, you know, like most people do, I put it on Facebook. I said, if I started a choir, who would come and join? So, of course, I had like 300 responses. <laughs> All right. And, you know, so, um, but... I kept thinking about it and pondering on and I was like, it's not time because I have so many other things. And then I had opportunity to travel with Pastor Key mm -hmm. for, okay. you know, work with him for about six or eight years or whatever. And, um, you know, with that going and just still a part of Elizabeth, I didn't have the time. Yeah. So I kind of transitioned, transitions things, you know, things started happening. And so I moved uh, to new life and I said well I wonder if I can start now I just kept talking to it and talking about it more and more and more and um, uh, one of the girls who used to be help with my administration mm -hmm. um, she said well let's come to the house let's write down the vision and the mission and let's see where it goes so she really helped me to really push you know to where I am now so okay. that's that's kind of how all that got started so I just put it out there I called yeah. a couple friends that I already knew um, who sang, and I was like, hey, you want to come sing with me? You know, I'm about to start something, and yeah, the rest okay. is history. Okay, so being that you've, you've been in the church all your life, what is the difference between Mitchell the person and <laughs> Mitchell the Levite, Mitchell the minister? Wow. Mitchell the person, I am antisocial. <laughs> <laughs> To a certain extent, yeah. because of my job, I'm also a preschool teacher. So because of my job, and I'm a minister music at my church, and I have a home, with, and I'm a community leader, in you know, in its own shape and form, I have to be sociable. Yeah. So I love people. Don't get me wrong. Right, right, right. I absolutely love, love people. people. <laughs> but when I have time to myself, yeah. I want to take time for myself just so I can decompress and, and enjoy life. Yeah. So, um. 
I, I, I have gotten better over the years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> most people like um, like Beyonce, for example, she has yeah. an album called Sasha Fierce. Mm-hmm. Most people are really, really quiet, really, really, really reserved oh, in yeah. their private lives. But when they go out on stage and they have to minister or they have to perform, oh, yeah. um, they, they take on a whole nother persona right. because you give so much of yourself on the stage. Mm-hmm. So it's totally understandable Absolutely. to have moments alone and want to keep those sacred yeah, exactly. because you really do pour and pour on the stage and to people. Exactly. So I have a question uh, from one of the members. I'm going to add a little piece okay. from me. Okay. So. One of the members wants to know what inspired you to choose the name Rehoven. I want to know what made you want to drop Fellowship Corral. Okay. So, what inspired me to choose the name Rehoven, I was in college in 2003, and my godpop is what I call him, my godpop. He, uh, he preached a sermon, Bishop Christopher Brinson. What if God okay. is on Yes, me? I know that. Um, he preached a message. I will never forget it. We were just, we had just gotten to our new location at the time. He preached a message called Rehoboth. And of course, I didn't know at the time what that meant. Never heard of it. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, a lot of times we read, but we kind of overread yeah. things. And so, um, I, and so that sermon just really stuck with me. And it was pretty much the sermon was Rehoboth. God has made room. And so I had said from that day, if I ever started anything, you know, I don't want to be no pastor, nothing like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if I ever started anything, I would call it Rehoboth. And so when the opportunity came for us mm. to start, you know, I pondered on the name and I was like, hmm, Rehoboth. And then, you know, me being in my flesh and kind of not knowing, you know, people were like, you know, what does that mean? Yeah. You know, so, and we did go through that season of what does that mean? Or they call us Rehoboth or Rehoboth or yeah. Spelling it wrong. Spelling it wrong. B A T H. Yeah, yeah. B E T H. And, and everything else in between. So um, that's what inspired me to start Rehoboth with that sermon. And um, uh, the reason why I decided to drop Fellowship Corral is because I'm, I'm really in the process of rebranding. Mm. So, you know, some things change with season. Yeah. You know, and um, I really wanted to rebrand what we have and what we're about to do the song about two years ago and it simply says there's nobody like him will y'all help me welcome mother Thelma listen that was a legend here in Charlotte come on she coming to sing with us come on here <laughs>
right here in the room. I see COVID survivors. I see cancer survivors. I see people who have been diagnosed with conditions and God healed them. I've seen God mend broken relationships. I've seen God do it. So don't tell me what God, don't tell me what God won't do. Because I've seen him do it. I've seen him prove it. Jesus, 
Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus. This next song that we're about to sing just talks about the blood of Jesus. You know, they don't get excited about the blood no more. I'm just a country boy, but they don't get excited about the blood no more. Because now it's about things that they can have and what they can get. But if it wasn't for the blood, if it wasn't for the blood, and it still works today, it still works today, it still works, and it will never, hey, yeah, my shot, it will never. It'll never lose its power. Hallelujah. Will you help me welcome Courtney Shea?
God, we thank you for your blood. God, we bless you for your blood. God, we give you glory for your blood. That you shed on Calvary. your name. vision and perspective for Rehoboth change since the pandemic. We've been in this pandemic for about two years, 
two and a half years for some. Mm. And most people have rebranded their church. They've rebranded yeah. their music department, yeah. their their look. A lot of we see a lot of lights, a lot of cameras. We see some people even have minimized numbers. Oh, yeah. So how has your perspective for Rehoboth changed since 2020? Hmm. It has definitely changed in a well, one good way. I'll give you one way. Okay. One way it's changed is um, you know, when the pandemic started, we nobody was able to do anything. Mm -hmm. Some people were willing, a few people were willing, a lot weren't because it was just we were in the unknown. Yeah. We were in unknown territory. To, unknown territory yeah. and nobody just never knew you know we didn't know it was a new virus we didn't know anything about it so you know we were, we were kind of chill for a couple of years you know i had to we had to cancel a lot of our engagements that we had already had lined up all the way to like july i had to cancel all of that mm -hmm. so you know that kind of put a little damper and kind of set me back just a little bit yeah um but you know it, it's changed in a way that you know technology has changed like you said technology has changed you know during the pandemic i learned a lot of things i learned how to record vocals i learned how yeah. to edit vocals i learned how to do videos i learned how to edit video you know i'm i've invested in a lot of stuff yeah so you know god has given me a charge to really just create my own platform at this point whether the phone rings or not Everybody's gonna have a high season. Everybody's gonna have a low season. Absolutely. So whether the phone rings or not, con continue to keep working. And Chico Gilmore, he used to sing with AD or does sing with AD. And he has a line that says, um, "What's the line he always says?" Uh, I'm be found that. working. Absolutely. Be found working. <laughs> I agree with that. And so yeah. uh, when Chico said that, you know, years ago, and I always see it a lot of times, you know, that's kind of like one of his things, be found working. Yeah. And so that's one thing that always stuck with me is just you got to be found working. You Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. Sometimes you have to, especially what we've learned during this pandemic is that you have to create a lot of your own ways. Yeah. You got to create a lot of your own doors being open and open um i remember bishop jakes saying that a lot of times we pray mm -hmm. for god to do something and god has already given us the tools in our hands right. so we're praying for tables and chairs and furniture when god said i've given you trees right and making furniture is your responsibility exactly so i love the fact that you have decided to not necessarily wait for the opportunities to come in, for the calls to come in, but we're gonna go in and we're gonna do it ourselves. That's right. A lot of the times with Rehoboth being, um, meaning uh, God has made ways, a lot of the times the way is us. Right. And we're sitting here waiting for God to make a way and exactly. he's already given us the way exactly. with this, with this, with every all of the stuff in our heart, in our minds, our visions, right. our dreams, that is the way. Right. 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 right, right so right. hopefully you guys have enjoyed this right now. We're gonna finish this off with God did it again. Huh? He did it again. <laughs>